Now I need my ski mask. All right, in all seriousness, uh, I had asked on my Facebook and Twitter today, um, I actually last week, uh, there were some dead trees in my yard and I just got the inkling to go out there and chop them down. This is my chainsaw. I've had it for uh, actually three, four, four, maybe five years. And I haven't started it and I figured this up. I thought it was only two years, but it's actually been about three years since I had started it. So I wanted to cut down these trees, but I'd had a chainsaw that had been sitting for, you know, more than a year. So I didn't just want to fire it up dry and I thought I'd just go through the process at least of what I did in order to get mine started. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying I'm not a small engines expert, but I know people that are. And those people are Donnyboy73 has an excellent channel on small engines, so if you have questions on small engines, you might want to head over there because he's probably done a video on it. And also my good friend Backwoods Country Boy, aka uh, the Mower Medic, uh, also has a great channel with this kind of stuff. So both of them work on small engines for a living. I'm going to say that they're probably more experts than I am. Um, but I, I just used what I'm going to call mechanical common sense when I fired this thing up for the first time. So uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this video and I'll, I'll show you what I did uh, to successfully get this thing to start and run after all that time. Well, here we have our chainsaw in question. It is an Echo chainsaw. It is a model CS306. Um, it's, it's a nice, you know, good chainsaw for having around the house, you know, for stuff. Uh, but it's a fairly simple design. It's got a two-stroke engine, which means I put a mixture of gas and the special oil. This is where the bar oil goes in, so you put oil in here to help lubricate the chain assembly. And then here is where your fuel uh, slash oil mix goes in there, two-stroke oil mix. Um, so this is what I did. And those of you out there are going to have asked me about seafoam, I don't know how many times, but... One of the first things I did was I just, I poured a little bit of sea foam in here um, because th this is the biggest thing that you're fighting. This gas that's in here sits in here over a long period of time. It kind of goes sour. So the gas isn't very good anymore. It's not as combustible. Um, I've had success, success using sea foam in my, in my yard equipment with the exception of my weed eater, which it kind of ate the fuel hose a little bit. But I didn't put a lot in. I just put like... You know, I, considering the size of the engine, I just poured like about that much in. So I, I didn't dump the whole thing in there. I just dumped a little bit in the fuel, in the oil. I didn't bring, there's already fuel in here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I don't really need to add fuel because I've actually run this. So this is not a cold start, so to speak, from that two years. It's just what I did. So that's the first thing I did. I topped off the fuel with some good fresh fuel. I put a little bit of sea foam in there, um, and I also had my fuel oil mix, which I believe for this model is 50 to 1. So I did that. The next thing I did was I came around to the back here, and I took the spark plug out. And it's really not all that difficult. Um, it's got the, uh, let's see, this one is a 13 16 So the first thing I did was I took the spark plug out. And actually one of the first things I noticed about it was that um, it, was, it wasn't gapped correctly. It actually had a much smaller gap than it should have had and smaller gaps aren't as good for a spark. So I re-gapped this. Um, I just took it out to, I believe it was like 44 thousandths. And basically I, I, I kind of eyeballed it um, I wasn't really exact with it and I probably should have been. And the second thing I did is something I'm told I should not do. Um, so I'm basically telling you I was told not to do this, but this is what I did. I just took my wire brush and I just went around the outside to get rid of any varnish or anything that was on the plug itself. Just to sort of dry it up a little bit. Make a nice clean surface. And I'm just doing this with like my hand. I'm not taking this over to the power wire wheel, I'm just doing this by hand. So I did that. And without the plug in, and obviously without the ignition on, there's a 
for this type, there's a little switch in the back where you can turn the ignition on and off right here. I left the ignition off and I left the plug out and I just did this a few times. And uh, also the other thing is this is the choke right here. And as far as any kind of choke goes, pull it all the way out and push it in just like a little bit. That way you can open the choke just a, a, a very slight amount. So I don't like to pull it all the way out because it doesn't like to start as well. I just push it in just a little bit. Now I'm not trying to start this, but this is what I did. And especially after this thing's been sitting for a while, the piston rings and like that inside the bore were just kind of sitting in there. Now, I thought of telling you to add like a little drop of oil to the cylinder, but I'm gonna be honest, I did not do that. I just did this. I just pulled this a few times without the spark plug in it so there's no compression so the piston can freely move inside the board. So I know that I'm getting compression because I can actually hear it. And I know my piston can move real nice. Now here's the other thing I did. I just took a little bit of starting fluid. Just a little bit, shot it in the spark plug hole. Alright, that might be a little much. Don't want to start a fire here. But I just squirted it in the spark plug hole and I don't care that it's not liquid down in there. Because I don't want it to be liquid in there. It's just, starting fluid is ether and it's better if it's a vapor. So I did that, put my spark plug back in. You don't need to over torque these things, just snug it down. These are just little engines, you don't need to hurt them. Reconnect the spark plug boot. And here's something else that, that you can do is if you find yourself confronted with a situation like this and, and you want to try and start something, you can actually create more, more resistance and a little bit of a hotter spark if you just uh, barely put the spark plug boot on there. That'll actually give you a little bit of a better spark. Okay, so now I've, I've pulled the cord a few times. I've, I've shot a little bit of ether in there. Now I'm gonna turn the ignition on. I'm gonna start it up. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to show you is I forgot to prime this, which is probably why it's not running. So you push the primer a few times until you see fuel up inside here, which I just got. So now I know that the gas can flow. Now I'll try it. Try my choke again. I think I didn't have enough. doing videos with chainsaws. Oh yeah, and one other thing I wore besides the uh, safety glasses was I had some pretty thick, hefty gloves. Um, I have friends that have had kickback instances with chainsaws and lots of stitches because chainsaws basically cut a, they don't, they don't make clean cuts at all. 
so it's it's good to have a layer of protection there just in case the thing decides to kick back up on you so safety glasses and thick gloves that's the way I roll as you can see pretty straightforward you got to mess with the choke a little bit the warmer it gets you want to push the choke all the way in um, that way you're not choking it off so I've got it to idle I've got it to run I ran pretty much all that quote-unquote bad gas out there really wasn't a whole lot of gas in it actually when I put it away I make sure I didn't have a whole lot of gas in there but what you can do if your gas is really old is you can actually just dump it out and put new in and you're probably better off because I, I think one of the biggest things you're gonna run into with it sitting for a long period of time is the gas going sour as I call it um, and just not being very combustible uh, the starting fluid in the spark plug hole helped a great deal uh, in fact, I tried a couple of pulls before I did that, but until I pulled the spark plug out, cleaned that off, and hit it with a st little bit of starting fluid, I wasn't having any luck uh, until that point. But that's how I got it started. Anyhow, remember, uh, go and see. I'm going to put links down in the description for Donnie Boy 73 and Backwoods Country Boy if you want to check out a little bit more about small engines. Uh, I just did this because uh, I asked my uh, my. My fan base, my Facebook and my Google people and my Twitter people, what uh, they thought of me doing a video about getting my chainsaw started after two and a half years, and here we are. I'm Eric the Car Guy, playing with a chainsaw. <laughs> you can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter, and sometimes I'll ask you things and you can make suggestions. Oh, let's not forget about Google Plus now, especially since they changed the Facebook format. Some of you are migrating over. To me, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm everywhere everywhere. I'm going to wrap this up by saying be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Take care, everybody. See you later.